Hi, I'm the Lockpicking Cuba. In this video, I'm going to take a look at a puzzle that is certainly well over 100 years old, but actually possibly thousands of years old. Here it is. It's the Towers of Hanoi. I'm sure you've seen this before. And although I started out trumpeting how ancient this puzzle is, this is clearly a new one. It's unopened as yet. It comes from Qi Yi, which is a well-known Rubik's Cube company from China. Uh, and this one's called the Rainbow Tower of Hanoi. You can probably see why. Okay, so let's get this open. So we get an instruction book um, with details of the other sizes of puzzle that are available. This one is the eight ring um, version. It tells you the rules, uh, gives you a bit of reasoning and some facts. And here is the puzzle. It's made by Chi Yi, who make extremely high quality uh, speed cubes. So I'm assuming it will be a good quality product, although I can't as yet figure out how to open the box. of the puzzle. And we have three poles. And like this. So we insert the poles in here and turn them. You've probably seen wooden versions of this puzzle, um, which arguably are probably rather nicer, but you can certainly see some merit in a nice long lasting version like this one. So let's see if I can get this set up that way. There we go. So there we have the uh, Chi Yi Rainbow Towers of Hanoi. The goal and the rules of this game are incredibly simple. So we start out with all the discs on one pole in size order from smallest at the top to largest at the bottom. And the goal is to move them all the way from this pole over to the right hand pole and there's a couple of rules um, we can take a disc off the top and we can place it onto an empty pole that's one thing we can do we can also take a disc and place it on top of a larger disc like this the one thing we're not allowed to do is take a disc and place it on top of a smaller disc so we can never place this red disc on top of either the yellow or the orange disc uh, and so on and that's it that's the whole puzzle um, that's all you need to know to be able to solve it um, you can choose, I mean, I, I always tend to think of it as moving from the left-hand pole to the right-hand pole, um, and then the middle pole becomes a kind of temporary storage area for discs, but you can choose. You can have it go from there to there or, or whatever, it doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to explain how to solve the Towers of Hanoi, actually with any number of discs. So I'll show you how to solve it with these eight, but I'll also explain how it works for larger or smaller numbers of discs as well. Um, so what I'm going to do first... So I'm going to start with this version, the simplest possible version of the Towers of Hanoi. We just have one disc. Well, I think you can figure out how to solve it. We just trivially move it from this pole to this pole, and we're done. I am showing you this for a reason. It's not completely pointless, um, so bear with me. So let's have a look at what happens now if we have two discs. We have the smallest disc on top of the next smallest disc. Um, now, if I moved this disc straight over to the destination, we kind of hit a dead end because we're not allowed to put this on top of that. So the only other move I can do, apart from going backwards, is to move this here. Uh, and now there's just no way to get this underneath that yellow disc. I can do that, but I haven't actually solved the puzzle. I'm kind of back where I started, actually. This is really the same state as that starting state if we consider these two poles to be equivalent to each other. What I want is to get them onto that pole. So the way we do that is we start by moving the smallest disc into the middle. So this is our temporary storage pole. Then we move the larger disc over to the destination. And then, well, it's trivial to see what you do now. You move the smallest one on top of that. And there we've solved the two disc version. Uh, Don't worry, it is going to get a little more complicated soon. So I just quickly want to note something and draw something to your attention, which is with one disc, we just moved it from the start straight to its destination. With two discs, we start by moving the small disc to the temporary storage location before moving the larger disc to the destination. It'll become obvious later on why I'm pointing this out. Okay, so let's have a look at three discs now. Here we have 
three disks. So one way to think about this is that we want to move the largest disk to its destination and then solve a regular two disk puzzle. And we know what to do there. In the two disk case, we move the smallest one to the temporary storage location and we move that one and then we move that one. So the question is, how do we get to this state? And we can take the same approach if we have four disks. We can say, well, to solve the four disk puzzle, what we're going to do is we're going to aim to get towards this state where we have the largest disk here and then solve the three disk puzzle. And to solve the three disk puzzle, we're going to again aim to get to this state. By the way, I say this state, this state is interchangeable. So in other words, these two disks on one of these two poles and these disks in this position on exactly that pole. Again, to solve from here, we're going to end up aiming to get to this state and then it's going to be trivial. Okay. Now, amazingly, the approach that I'm describing here works for literally any number of disks. So to solve the full eight disks that come with the puzzle, we're going to aim to get to this state where we have the largest disk here and we have the other seven on one of these two poles. Before we get to that, we're going to aim for this state where we have the largest two here. Before that, we're going to aim for this state and so on until we get to the very end where we're going to end up like this and we're going to move the smallest disk on top like that. Now, obviously I missed out some steps there. So how do we deal with those missing steps? How do we actually get into that state where we've moved the largest disk uh, to where we want it to go? Well, let's go back again to three disks and have a look. So our goal here is to move this red disk, the largest one, over to here. Well, in order to do that, what we're going to do is we want to get these two disks onto this middle one. Okay. So. In order to do that, we're going to think of this as being two disks that want to go here. This is our new destination for this two disk puzzle. And if you remember earlier on, I said when you have just one disk, you move it straight to where you want it to go. When you have two, you start by moving the smallest disk to the place you don't want it to go. So actually now we're going to treat this one as the temporary storage location. Now we're going to move this disk here, which is where it wants to go. This is going to go back on there. And then we can move this over here. And now we've got what we wanted. We've got our largest disk over on the right hand side and we've got the other two in the starting location. Okay, so now we've got a two disk puzzle to solve. So again, we're gonna move this to the new temporary storage location, which is over here. I'm gonna put this where it wants to go. Oops. And then we're gonna put this all the way over there. All right, so let's take a look at this now with five disks. See how this is gonna work. Um, so, I mentioned before that when we have one disk, it goes where it wants to go. When we have two, it goes to the temporary storage location. We can actually extend this to any odd or even number. If we had 101 disks, <laughs> we would start by moving this one to where it wants to go. If we have five disks, we start by moving this one to where it wants to go. If we had 108 disks, we'd start by moving this one to the temporary storage location. So, what we're aiming to do is we're aiming to get this green disk over here on its own. And in order to do that, we're going to start by getting these four disks on here. And in order to do that, we're aiming to get this blue disk here and these three over here. And in order to do that, we're aiming to get this one over here and these two over here. And before, in order to do that, we're going to aim to get this one over here. So at each stage, we're breaking the problem down into smaller and smaller problems. If you're a computer scientist, you're probably very familiar with this from ideas like recursion uh, and map produce and so forth. Anyway. Now we've got to the state, this first sort of interim state we wanted to get to, where we've got this disk where it wants to go temporarily. These are two even, so we're going to go over there and here, oops, and then here. Now we get to move this one to here, and our goal now is to move these three on top of this blue one so that we can get the green one to the end. We've got an odd number, so we start by going to the destination here, over here. This one can now go on top of that. Now we've got an even number. We're sort of ignoring the green one for now. We're just trying to solve getting these four to here. So we've got an even number. So this goes over to the temporary storage location. This one goes to the destination. This one goes to the destination. Ta-da! Right. Now we've hit a big milestone, an even bigger one than getting the blue one here. We've now got the first disk into its final correct position. Our new goal is to solve this four disk Towers of Hanoi and get this blue one on top of the green one. We've got an even number, so we're going to start by going this way, like so. Okay, now this can go over here, 
and that's two discs in place. Now we've got an odd number. So we're going to start with this going there. Here. Now we've got two discs. Now we've just got one. And it's solved. So this is Towers of Hanoi. You can use this approach that I'm describing where each step of the way you're trying to solve everything bar the bottom one, get those onto the place, the temporary storage location so that you can get the biggest one to its destination. Then you kind of imagine that that biggest one isn't there anymore and you treat this as the biggest one and then this one and this one and this one and so on. You can do that with as many number of these as you like. Now, there's also a lot of really interesting mathematical um, stuff about the Towers of Hanoi. So let's move on to having a look at that. So let's remind ourselves, if we have a one disc Towers of Hanoi, it takes one move. If we have two discs, how many moves is it going to take? Well, it's going to take one, two, three. So if we have three discs, how many moves is it going to take? Perhaps you can already guess. It's an odd number, so we're going to start by heading straight for the destination. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For four discs, it's going to take 15 moves. For five discs, it's going to take 31 moves. For six discs, it's going to take 63 moves, and so on and so on. You probably recognize these numbers if you're at all interested in numbers, or maybe you don't. Um, what these numbers are are powers of two. In other words, if we start multiplying two by itself and then subtracting one, we're going to get these answers. So two to the power of one with one disc is just two. We subtract one from that, and that gives us one move. Two to the power of two is four. We subtract one from that, we get three moves. 2 to the power of 8 is 256. We subtract 1 from that, means it takes 255 moves to solve the 8 disc Towers of Hanoi. Now if you're into Doctor Who, uh, as I am, you may remember that there was an episode of Doctor Who from the 1960s called The Celestial Toymaker. And in this story, the Doctor was given a task of solving what was effectively the Towers of Hanoi with 10 discs. Um, and in that case he worked out that it was going to take 1,023 moves uh, to solve the puzzle, which course well I'm not going to give you any spoilers about whether he solved it or not you can probably imagine anyway so there we go um, this is the uh, the rainbow towers of Hanoi um, from Chi Yi yeah to be completely honest I'm not really sure I can see the point of Chi Yi making uh, the towers of Hanoi it's nice and colorful um, it's very solid uh, it comes in this nice um, packing case although it is surprisingly hard to get it open. Maybe I just uh, don't have the knack. Other than that, this would have been great for kids. Uh, my daughter got into the Towers of Hanoi when she was quite a bit younger. It's one of those puzzles that uh, can keep um, a child occupied for a while, I found. So yeah, I do recommend you get hold of a Towers of Hanoi if you don't have one. I don't particularly recommend this uh, chi -yi version, although it kind of looks pretty. Personally, I think the wooden ones um, are by far the nicest versions of the Towers of Hanoi to play with. So I recommend getting hold of one of those. Um, anyway, I hope you found this useful um, and possibly enjoyable. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.